that would hurt. So I've been thinking. So it's coming towards the end of the year and you know what that means, holiday season's in full flow. And I thought, what better way to round out 2022 than to create one of the coolest boss fights in From Software. Now I've been to many festivals in my life, but never have I been to one where you literally have to kill a demigod. But anyway, that does bring me to creating this last piece of 2022, which is gonna be the Radan Festival. And engage in jolly cooperation. So today we are looking at the summons that are called upon to fight against Star Scourge Rodan. So who's included in this set, you may be asking. Well, I will tell you. First off, we have everybody's favorite good boy, Blythe. Here he is, in his sort of howling pose. We also have Alexander Ironfist, the legendary pot boy himself. As you can tell, I've already pieced him together and I've got some epoxy putty already layered out, filling in some gaps around him. We also have the Samurai Okina. Handy little dude. We have Lionel the Lionhearted. Now this one didn't fare too well, so I think I'm gonna have to fix him up a bit. His, <laughs> his sword broke, as you can see here. <laughs> and this one broke as well, so I think while I'm painting the other guys, I think I'm gonna reprint this dude. We also have the Swinging Mammoth, Great Horned Tragoth. Tragoth, Tragoth? Anyway, big swingy hammer boy. Fair amount of these have been created by Real Stone on Patreon, so I will leave a link below if you want to go and download some collections of his because they are very, very cool. There is also this Raging Wolf Tarnished. And finally, I designed my very own patches but I've designed him to be running away. Because <laughs> obviously the whole thing terrifies him and he immediately quits. He's got a little screaming face in this sort of running away pose, which I think will be quite funny in the whole diorama. Now, there are a few other summons that you can get in there as well. I think I'm missing Finger Maiden, Therolina and Castellan Geron, but you know, you can't have them all, so I don't think I'd be able to fit all of them on, so I went with the main ones that are most recognisable anyway, I think. Obviously this is part one of three, and in this one I will only be doing the summons, getting them ready to put onto the diorama. In part two I will be doing Radan, and then in part three I'll be putting it all together. So what I need to do now is just get them primed, and I'm going to go do that and get them primed with some black. So we have them all primed up and ready to go. Lionel's not here, sadly. He didn't make it, so he's just being reprinted at the moment. But for now, what we need to do to start everything off is to Zenith or highlight them. So if we get our airbrush, get some titanium white ink, and then all we need to do to Zenith or highlight is just spray from top angle to generate the light source, and we'll do it across all the models. You can see what the Zenithal highlight does look like with it, so you can actually see more of the details on patches here. So with that, that is the more painted, apart from, you know, Lionel, who is being reprinted as we speak. So I have already painted um, a pot boy before. So there is a very like much more detailed description of how I paint him. And I'm gonna kind of just use the same methods that I did before. I'm gonna grab the colors that we're gonna need for him. Rishbati Bone, Zandri Dust, Thalor Brown, Mornfang Brown, and Rhinox Hide. Just all the different tones going from the lightest to the darkest. So yeah, let's get the first color painted up and that will be Rishbati Bone. And I'll just be spraying top down just to get the lightest coat towards the top. And because of our lovely Zenithal highlight, it should just help us get that nice blend from light to dark. So next color, we'll be moving down into Zandri Dust. And then same again, but we're just moving lower down on the model. Zandri Dust applied. 
Then the next one will be Balor Brown. So same again with this darker tone, just moving further down the body. Then we have him with the third tone applied. Now we're gonna move down to the browns, starting off with Mornfang Brown. Getting that real shade around underneath the rim and towards the bottom of the body as well. So then we'll do the last color, which will be Rhinox Hide. So there we have our airbrush based pod boy. So what we need to do next is paint in the limbs. I'm just gonna base the limbs with a layer of Rhinox Hide. Okay, there's his little arms done. I'm just gonna do the same for his legs. So there he is with his limbs and body painted. So onto the wet palette, I'm gonna put some Mornfang Brown on. And I'm basically just gonna turn it into a glaze just because I want to start darkening down some areas that we can then highlight later. So like these, this area here, the sort of like details, it's gonna wash the glaze of Mornfang Brown because then we can go over and bring the highlights back in. But I just want these dark, the little sort of like deeper bits to sort of tone down a tad. And I'm gonna go around the rim as well, the sort of like most inner shadow underneath the rim just with some Mornfang Brown, just a light glaze. And then we can go over and do another wash of this with some darker browns afterwards. Cool, and then I'm gonna do the same for the sort of like cracked areas as well. The sort of glazes are sort of washed onto those little cracked areas and the details as well, so we can bring out the highlights on them a bit more. So I'm gonna do the exact same that I did with the Mornfang Brown, but I'm gonna do it with the darker Rhinox Hide. So we've added in our glazes, and now we're gonna highlight these details on the top here. So there we are, there's our detailed Alexander. So what we need to do is do the little sort of chains, the bracelet kind of things that are on his shoulders. They are kind of the same color, but I kind of want to have them a bit shiny. So I'm gonna say that Rune Lord Brass is a good way to go. So now we just need to do some dry brushing on the arms so that we can just like pick out the little knobbly bits. I'm gonna dry brush on a layer of Mornfang Brown. Same again, we'll do it with some Zandri dust. There we are, our beautiful Alexander. So just to finish off, I'm just gonna drop some Agrax Earthshade onto the limbs, get them sunk into all the little recesses and little parts underneath all the rocks. There we go. So now all we need to do on him is just do his little lid. Here is the lid. And I'm just gonna use some Flesh Terrors Contrast Paint. And because we did a nice zenithal highlight job on this lid, the contrast will react really nicely to it. Here we go, wonderful. Now all we need to do is just get that stuck on him. Here he is, Alexander. The first summon for our festival. Now I think we can safely move on to the next one. Oh, go on then. I think the next one I'm gonna do patches. Because I've not seen a patches done before. So I think it'll be quite nice to do the bald scaredy boy. Oh, dropped him already. Let's just get a rudimentary base of contrast paints on this little fella. And I will start off with some Leviathan Blue, which will go on his sort of cape slash shawl thing. Okay, so that's the shawl coated. I'm gonna then move to the leather. And can you guess what we're using? Yes, it would be snake bite leather contrast. So just all the little leather bits, the boots, the trousers, the arms, just gonna get a good first coating of it all over. I've just blue tacked him to a pen, so just to make it easier to paint around him. So there's all the leather part painted with snake bite leather. He's kind of looking like Superman right now, isn't he? While we're letting the leather dry, we can quickly move on to just basing the face with a little bit of contrast as well. Gilliman's Flesh Contrast onto the face. There we are. So, some Basilicanum Grey contrast. I'm gonna use this for his boots. So they can be a sort of like dark gray brown 
shade of color. Just one layer of basilicon to his boots done. I'm then gonna add some of the basilicon gray to his back. And then again, some basilicon gray probably to his gloves. Try and make them the same color as the boots. And we can darken down the leathers on the sort of trousers and sort of underneath the arms. And but to do that, I'm gonna grab some Garagaxua. Starting to come together quite nicely, isn't it? A little scaredy boy. But I'll probably paint his face while we're waiting for the rest to dry. Cadian flesh tone and Kizla flesh to generate the highlights on his face. And excitingly, my artist opus brushes have arrived, to which I'm going to use painting the details on Patch's face. I'm going to take some Cadian flesh tone. I'm going to start adding in these brighter skin details to his face, just mapping out these sort of like pre highlight areas. See, we've still got some shadows left in, which is nice, but we've mapped out those sort of like lighter areas to color in. And what I will do is I'll grab some Night Questor Flesh, which is a good sort of like shady skin tone. Same brush as what I used for painting the sort of pre highlights with the Cadian Flesh Tone. I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to be painting this Night Questor Flesh into the shadows. There's our Night Questor Flesh added into the face. Okay, so with the Night Quester flesh done, I'm gonna move up to the Kizla flesh, and I'm gonna use this to pick out points within the highlight within the Cadian flesh tone. Highlight's done. So what I'm gonna do now is just do like a little glaze of Cadian flesh tone over it. Sort of start bringing these tones together a tad. And it'll take a few applications of this to start bringing it together. That's him with some glazing done to the face. I'm really starting to bring those tones together a bit more. So I think just to keep highlighting, I'm going to add a second layer of Kizla flesh to all the bright points again. Very cool. Patches. You son of a bitch. So we're just going to paint his eyes, grab some Corax white, and very, very carefully. Kind of paint these eyes in. Whites of the eyes are in. And then I'm just gonna color some pupils in with some Abaddon black. Patches with some eyes painted in. Now next up, we're gonna paint on the little ropes that are on his little thingamajigs there. I'm gonna use some Balor brown ropes painted in. Now what we need to do is do his armor. Thin layer of Ishin Grey. I'm just gonna coat all parts of the armor. So the armor is coated with a thin layer of Ishin Grey. I'm gonna add a second tone, which will be the brighter one, sort of mapping out where our highlights are gonna be, and that'll be using Administratum Grey. Okay, so we've blocked out where the highlights are gonna be on the armor here. And then take the administratum grey down to a bit of a glaze and just kind of work between the tones a bit try and smooth out those transitions sort of like that so then we can take some administratum grey on the tiddly tiny brush and just start going around some of the edges beautiful and then we can take some Corax white and do the same thing, but even smaller pockets of areas. Generate those super duper highlights. Okay, so there's our armor done. A bit of basic NMM. Now what I wanna do is just paint in the leather straps on the side of him. I'm just gonna kind of delicately add some detailing to the gloves and the boots. And there we are. There's our little patches. Running away from the first sight of danger. So, I spent a fair bit of time doing those two. I think we want to start speeding things up a tad so we don't spend forever doing these summons. So let's do Bloody Finger Okina. 
his sort of undercoat is a, like an orange kind of tone, so I'm thinking some Griffhound orange contrast could work quite nicely. If we want to start speeding things up a tad, this is probably a good way to go. Okay, so we've got a nice orange contrast underneath. So for the legs, we'll use some snake bite leather. Cool. And the mask, we can use skeleton horde contrast paint. Looking pretty cool already. And it's just gonna be a contrasty kind of character because I'm gonna use some Gilliman's flesh just to sort of like paint that exposed skin on the neck. Let's do the hair, base it with some Hishin Grey. Same for the beard. We will start off by just doing exactly what we just did with the hair there, and just a very thin layer, basing the armor with some Hishin Grey. Very careful not to take away all the lovely details and highlights that Real Stern added into his model here. Please tell me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, mate. I have no... I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing it correct, but if I'm not, please correct me. Okay, that's the Ishin Grey based around the armor. Take some Abaddon Black, thin it down, and I'm just gonna go over the little shadowy parts of the armor we've just done, just to get some darkness back into it before we start dry brushing on lighter details. And I'm gonna load up some Administratum Grey onto this makeshift dry palette. Just gonna start dry brushing on some brighter tones. Now I'll do the same to the hair as well. And then I'm gonna do some Corax White, do the exact same thing, just to give us some even brighter highlights. Okay, so there's the armor pretty much done. So there are gold detailings around the armor edges. So I'm gonna go back to my Balor brown color. I'm gonna use that to kind of edge highlight on some goldish tones to the armor. So there's the gold, golden decals painted around the edges of the armor. Makes it look a lot cooler. What we have left to do is paint in the ropes, which I will do using some Zandri dust. The ropes painted in. His sword is sheathed, so we don't get to do a bloody sword. So instead, his sheath is black. We will use some Black Legion contrast paint and just coat the whole sheath. Here we go, bloody finger Akina. So we have Blythe left to do, or if you're spelling it phonetically, Blade. Blade. So Blythe has a little blue shawl cape kind of thing, similar to what we did for patches. So I'm gonna grab some Leviathan blue contrast paint and just get that painted in to begin with. Okay. So there's a little blue piece painted in. Now to sort of base the fur, I'm gonna just do a thin layer of the silicon and gray, and then we can add some fur tones to it on top to start building them out a tad, so it can work nicely with our zenithal highlight. And we can do the boots, which are leather boots, and you can guess what we're gonna use. Snake bite leather. Now we need to base the armor, and we'll do the same as what we did for Bloody Finger Akina, and we shall take some Ishin Grey, and we'll just use that to base the armor. Okay, so now the armor is based with Ishin Grey, and now we've just gotta let that armor dry, and while it's drying, we can then do the fur, and to do the fur, we're gonna take some Storm Vermin fur and our dry brush. We can just start dusting on some of these brighter fur tones we're gonna do the same again, but with some Mornfang Brown to get a little bit of brown tone into it. I'm gonna keep moving up, dry brush in some Zandri dust. Light gray tones, so probably some Administratum gray. I'm just gonna dry brush on again. And lastly, I'm gonna do the same again, but with some Corax White. So there's our fur layered up. So now back to the armor, and we're gonna pop some Administratum Grey onto the wet palette, along with some Abaddon Black as well, and finally some more Corax White. 
So we'll take our tiddly brush and we'll go around with the administratum grey and we'll just map out where the highlights are going to be. So there we have the areas mapped out. Brilliant. Try again. So there we have the areas mapped out for highlights on the armour. So I'll do exactly what we did with patches. I'll just take some administratum to a glaze, just blend between them a bit. Okay, and then we just need to add in the highlights, which will be with the Corax White. There we are. The armour painted in nicely. I will take a slightly larger brush and a glaze of black, and I'm just going to go back down the fur, just to add in some shadows that were lost from the dry brushing. Now I'm going to paint in his little nose. Same for his eyes. So now we can do his sword. We'll do a basing of Ishin Grey. So the sword's based with Ishin Grey. We've left this bit, the hilt, white because that's, um, that is gold. Now we're going to block out some highlights with Administratum Grey. So I've kind of done this like bounce approach where it's staggered, where you've got alternating blocks of Administratum Grey to Ishin Grey. And then within the administratum grey, I'm gonna put the main highlight, which is Corax white, around the center of it. So we've got this kind of three tones going on now. And within the Ishin grey, I'm going to work a block of Abaddon black in the center of it. There we go. There's our blocked out shades. And all that's left to do is just blend between them using glazes of these four tones. There we go. So that's it blended together on that side up here. And then I'm kind of just gonna replicate that on the other side and then we'll check back when that's done. There's our sword. And next thing to do is just paint the gold hilt, which I will do using some retributor armor. And also these decals here are gold as well. Okay, so there's the hilt done with some Gould, and last but not least, we need to do the tiny little gem that's on the sword. Some Cantor blue for basing. I've also just seen that the actual handle is blue as well, rather than gold. Now we just need to add a tiny bit of highlight to this gem with some Lothan blue. There we are, our little Blythe. Done and done. So very cold outside. Everywhere has frosted over. Ah uh, yes, we have the tarnished, big swingy hammer bro, and Lionel Lionhearted next. Let's do the tarnished, shall we? We actually have a fair bit of red on this armor. So I'm just gonna get that painted on first with some Flesh Terra's red contrast. Okay, there's the fur painted in. I still can't seem to shake this cold that I've had for the past two or three weeks. It just keeps coming back. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice or not. So on the sort of shoulder plates, I'm gonna use some Canoptech alloy. Now the main arm is a funny one because it is, it's metal, but it's got like a red tinge to it. So what I think I might do for the sake of ease is I might just do a, like a light layer of like a metallic color on it lead belcher perhaps and then I might do some like shading on it and then I'll probably do like a really thin application of something like coagulated blood maybe just like dot it around because it kind of just looks like a blood stained armor so I'll just do a very thin layer of lead belcher okay so most of the armor has now been coated with some lead belcher um, I need to decide what colour I want to do the shield in. Gold and black is always quite cool. Let's do that. So, Balor Brown. Do what we did for Blade Sword and do this kind of like blocked out alternating colour approach. And then we'll do gold shadows, which is always good to use with some Rhinox Hide. So this will be our gold shadow colour. So there's our shadows and main colours blocked out. So what I will do is I'll grab some Mornfang Brown, because that's a good sort of mid-tone for this sort of thing. And I'll just go between the Rhinox Hide and the Balor Brown with this. 
And then, same as what we did with Blythe's sword, we'll just start glazing to blend between these tones. Now just to decide what colour to do the actual shield, let's do black. Black Legion Contrast. Once that's dried, we'll go around and add the details in. We have the top bit on the chest, which is quite bright, so I'm gonna use some Runefang steel. Same thing as we did before with the lead belcher. Thin, thin, thin layer. So now I'm just gonna mark out the little details that are on the armor. So like the little leather straps and things. Grab some Rhinox hide, just paint in these little leather straps that are around. Okay, so there's the little leather bits painted in around him. I'm just gonna grab some Mournfang Brown just to give him a bit of highlight. Okay, we've got the bits that are sort of underneath the fur, which is kind of dark gray. I'll take some Basilicanum Gray. Just these little bits here. Right, so the whole main part, apart from the sword and the hair, is pretty much mapped out. Let's actually, let's get the hair done before we move on. So we'll base it with some Wraithbone. Now I can just start adding in a couple of different tones. Just grab some Administratum Grey and just start working these in. Some like Eshin Grey as well. And then I'm just gonna generate some highlight with some Corax White. Right, now we just need to add some details for the shield. I'm gonna take some Avalon Sunset, which is just a sort of brighter yellow version of the Balor Brown, and I'm just gonna edge highlight the rim of the shield. Now we can go around and just start adding some shading in to the rest of the body. So I'm just taking a glaze of Abaddon Black. I'm just gonna start shading in. Okay, now we can do the sword, base with some Eshin Grey. And while I let that dry for a sec, I am going to grab my favorite coagulated blood. And I'm gonna use this and just start adding in some of this blood tinge, excuse the bloodborne pun, some of this blood tinge to the armor. There you go, blood tingy. Then we're gonna move up and do some highlighting with some administratum gray to the sword. And then some abaddon black at the base of the blade. Okay, now that we've got our three tones on the sword, from Administratum Grey down to the Eshin Grey down to the Abaddon Black, I'm gonna take some Orax White, and do the same as what we did for Blade Sword. Blythe, keep calling him Blade. Three points of highlight, bang, 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 alternating. And then same as before, just start using some glazes in the greys, start blending those between a bit. There we go. This is our sword. And I think I will give the base of it a little coating of blood. There we go. And I think that is our tarnished Raging Wolf done diddly un. And that leaves us two left to do because we've now had Lionel reprinted and he's looking much better, in much better shape than before. And big bibbity boppity big boy. I think because we need to Zenith will highlight him, we'll do him last. So bibbity boppity big swingy hammer bro. So it seems to be iron metal with some gold highlighting and the big sort of antlers. So let's get those antlers done. I'm thinking pop some Garagax sewer on it because it will be a nice sort of dark brown tone. Antlers done. Now I think we're pretty safe in just doing an overall coating of thin down lead belcher on this armor. Same thing as what we did for the tarnished. So that's the armor base with a thin layer of lead belcher and the antlers coated with some Garagax sewer. What we need to do now is the fur that he has around him. So I'm thinking a base of Rakarth flesh. Quite good. It's quite a pale tone, not too browny. I'm just using this to just go over all the little fur parts. Now what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a wash of Noln oil over the armor and then we can dry brush on some highlights. Just trying to keep things relatively simple at this stage because I've already spent an awful long time painting these little fellas. Some Nunel oil, just go over the armor. Just give us a bit of shade and a bit of gloss to which we can highlight after. And then I'm gonna use some Seraphim Sepia shade to go over the fur. Cool, we just need to let that dry. So whilst that's drying, 
we can check out how to do the hammer. Kinda, just a big stone, isn't it? So let's make this easier for ourselves and we'll use some basilicon gray as a base. This is the giant crusher hammer. Cool. And the actual metal looks kind of in between gold and silver. So a nice choice would be some Rune Lord brass. I think that could be quite good. Just a sort of a slightly darker tone than the Canoptic alloy that we used on the tarnished. And I'll just coat the handle with it for now. And I'm just going to go over the sort of little beautiful detail that's on the hammer here with some Rune Lord brass as well. And I think I will just do some null oil yeah, on the handle of the hammer just to bring the tone down a bit. So now that the armor has dried from the null oil, we can brighten up a tad and I think I'm going to do that with a small coating of Necron compound. So make sure that's relatively dry. Yep. And I'll just start bringing out some highlights on this armor. There we go. Now there are some little like rope details on him. So I'm just going to grab some Zandri dust, fart it on the wet palette, and I'll grab my tiddly tiny detail brush and I'll start painting those in. Okay, with the rope painted in, all that's left to do is just go around the edges and bring in some of the gold edging that's on this armor. Okay, there we go. Some little gold detailing on the armor. What's left to do is dry brush on some details to the hammer. I'll take some Dawnstone, voila. I'll take my little Ardis Opus dry brush, and just lightly just start brushing on these highlights. Cool, same again. Long beard gray. And there we have one great horned Tragoth. Tragoth? Who knows? Which leads us, lastly, to Lionel. There he is, looking lovely and chunky. First things first, let's get the easy bits out of the way. Because mainly, it's just one big coat of armor that we can do some stylings to. But to begin with, we have some red tones on some of the fur, as most of the armors in this game do. So. Back on our flesh tear is red, and it's just this little, this little underpiece here. And we need to invest in a new red contrast, and so everything's not just flesh tear is red, but hey ho. There's our little red under bit done on the back as well. Next up, we have all the little leather bits. So that is all the bits under the armor. So we're going to use some snake bite leather. Absolutely love this contrast paint. Absolutely love it. Okay, so all the leathery bits underneath are now coated with some snake bite leather. And I did the top bit with some red as well. So what is left to do is the armor and the swords. And the armor is all really one color with a bit of rusting on it. So let's get basing it as we did before with all the other armors. Thin layer of Ishin gray, important to keep it thin. We don't want to lose this zenith or highlight underneath. We want those shades and highlights coming through this base coat. There he is, based with Ishin Grey. But nice and thin, because you can see we've still got the Zenithal highlight shine coming through, which is nice. Which then means we can now map out our pre-highlights, and the body is spherical, so I'm going to have the bright point in the center of the body. And do the same thing for the legs and arms. Here we go, we have our mid-tone sort of pre-highlight applied all over. We'll do the shadows with some Abaddon Black, nicely thinned down. And here we have our sort of blacks applied in as well. So underneath, in between the Yishin Grey. And lastly, we're going to put our highlights in which will be thinned down, Corax white, very much in the center of that administratum gray. 
Okay, there we go. And that's all of our bright highlights done. All over. Nicely blocked out. So it's now just a case of going around with thin glazes, just blending between these tones. And same as the other ones, you know, it will take a fair couple of applications of different glazes to start blending between them. But patience is key and you will start to see it blending together a bit more. Here we go. It's a sort of blended tummy. And I'm just gonna re replicate that across the rest of the armor. So there we are. There's our little man. And I've edge highlighted some of the little ridges around the armor as well, just after blending all of that together. So what's left to do is just doing the cape on the back. So I'm just gonna <clears throat> base that with some skeleton horde contrast paint. And what I've got left to do for the armor is just add some specks of rust around. So I'm just stippling on some Mornfang brown. And also what's quite nice with doing this is that it will also help if some of the transitions between the shades aren't fully blended. Stippling on some rust around will help sort of cover those up a bit. Here we are. There's our little man. And with that, that brings us to the final summon for Radan Festival done. Now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to line them up because none of them are freestanding as of yet, but we can give it a go. Well, there they all are. All of the summons that I have for the Radan Festival. Pretty cool, it's pretty fun doing them all. Can't wait to get Radan done next week. I think the diorama's gonna look really cool when it's done. And that's about it from me. Let me know down below who is your favorite from out of all of this. I think for me, it's probably either Patches or Lionel, but do let me know who you think is the best down below. And yeah, ah. there goes Tregoth. And that about does it. So thank you very much for tuning in. And I will see you all next week for the painting of the main man himself, Radan. Cheerio. Yes, thank you very much everyone for joining me for this part one of three for making the Festival of Radan Diorama. Now over on Instagram on the lead up to this over the past week, I have been dropping some clues on my stories about what is the upcoming diorama. And the idea for me was to hopefully keep it somewhat cryptic and the first three people who guessed it correctly would get a shout out, but there were so, so, so many of you who guessed it right and it kind of felt a bit stupid to carry on doing it, but I did it anyway. Like I said, the first three people who got it were, and sorry if I'm pronouncing this wrong, Jogos Model Paint and Pink Ranger 89 both guessed it on the second clue. But the biggest shout out goes to Cole Sandoval, Cole Sandoval, Sandoval, sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, who managed to guess it from the very first clue, which was just a couple of skeletons, and he was the only person to get it from clue one. So big shout out to you, Cole. And that does it from me here. If you did make it this far and you did enjoy today's episode, please drop this video a like, leave a comment, let me know who your favorite summon was from this video. And if you're new here and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and join our jolly little gang of cooperation. Peace out, gang and don't you dare go hollow.